Hey planner friends, how's it going? Thanks so much for stopping by my channel. My name is Ryan and this is A Man With The Plans. And we are back to do another budget, this time for the month of June 2020. And so as you can tell, I had a little bit of fun kind of going back and laying this out for you. Normally I do this on camera, but for some reason I was just relaxing over Memorial Day weekend, that's when I'm shooting this, and I just had a little bit of fun. Use some Erin Condren stickers, use some Chris Ann Designs. This little penguin friend is from Planertopia. And then this washi, uh, that I got this thick one and this little thin guy. This is all from uh, favorite daughter Emily from her washi shop. She gave it to me, so I will leave a link to her channel over there if you want to take a look. Um, really quick, I had filmed my May budget and I had done it in two parts and the lighting had changed and I had made all these adjustments to it and I really hated the way it came out. So what I will do, and I'll flip back to May so you can see it, um, what I will do, as you can see here, is I'm going through and I'm already doing the expenses, so I will go ahead and film an end of month video instead, talking a little bit about some of the things that happened, as you can see there. Some sinking fund usage, super exciting. But for now, let's go ahead and dive in. There's not a whole lot happening this month, I'm going to be honest with you. I think uh, with everything still happening in the world, it's one of those things where we're kind of just waiting and seeing, at least for me. Um, not really making any big financial moves, just trying to make sure that I have enough funds to keep me going. Same setup as always, you've got the income, you've got the fixed expenses and the variable, student loans, sinking fund, some fun decoration to call it a day. So, let's go ahead and uh, turn this guy this way, and we will go ahead and zoom it on in and let's get rolling. So, the first thing we've got here is my income, and as you can see, we've got the estimate, we've got the actual, and we've got the difference. So for me, I generally don't ever get overtime, but I like to just anticipate if something happens, or I'm able to get, I mentioned like a trade time for fitness thing, I kind of do that every now and again, I like to leave it open. So the first thing we're going to do here is fill in my normal income from my day job. It's a two paycheck month, so we'll do HC number one. All right, now that the car alarm has stopped going off. So we've got my first two paychecks here. Generally, they are about the same, so we're going to estimate $1,980 per paycheck. And generally, there isn't much of a change from that, but I like to just measure it if there is one. The next thing is my side hustle. I am an integrator for a friend's online business. And we're doing a launch this month, so I anticipate some extra hours. So I'm going to estimate $750 in that. I also get a transfer from my parents for $300. This was an agreement we made um, around my student loans. They would pay for undergrad and I would take care of my graduate school loans. So they transferred that over as what the normal minimum payment would be, which is always nice. When you add up all of this, my total income for the month of June is going to be $5,010 estimate. Not too shabby. I like seeing that with a five. Overall good stuff. Whoa. Sorry, I'm getting overexcited here. I'm curious to see how much from the side hustle it will be and how much work I'm going to be doing throughout the month. That's the one thing about not really having to go anywhere is I feel like I'm getting a lot more done in my side gig. So always a good time. The next thing we're going to do is move to our fixed expenses. Now these are generally expenses that don't change very often. So I can always anticipate that my rent is going to be the same amount because of the lease agreement I'm in. Same thing with my insurance rate. Same thing with my internet, you know, you buy a contract for the year, you know what it is. Uh, if something does change here, it's a big deviation, but since it fits into my budget, I just leave the actual column. And generally, my fixed expenses are rent, which is $1,525, which is a little bit pricey, but I do live in downtown Minneapolis. When I was working in an office building, it was very convenient because I could walk to work, uh, making some considerations for moving someplace further outside of the city to save a little bit of coin. So look out for that and all the fun moving videos that'll come from that. Since right when I started this channel, I was moving into this place, so lots to change there. The next thing is parking, which is $125 a month. Worth its weight in gold in the middle of winter when you don't have to clean the snow off your car, let me just tell you. Uh, the next thing we've got on here is my internet, not my internet, my insurance, sorry. That's through State Farm, and I it's $93. I think it's like $92 and change. And then the next thing on there is my sinking fund. I always put $200 towards that, and this month I need to replenish my car maintenance fund because I had to get a new battery. That'll be a fun story I can totally uh, explain as we go. The next thing here is my student loan minimums. I am still paying the minimum payment that I've created. This is basically my snowball minimum. Um, I know that there's some con conversation and some legislation that went through the House of Representatives 
We'll see what happens about $10,000 worth of student loan forgiveness. As you can see this month, I'm still above the $10,000 threshold, so I'm fine paying towards it either way. Um, if it goes through, which I'm not sure it will, I'm going to continue to pay this until it hits 10,000 and then I will just take those payments and stock up the cash because if and when the deferment period ends, I will be able to just make one gigantic payment on it anyway. That is my personal preference. I know people are sort of just ignoring the fact that it's happening and taking this time to make interest-free payments. I've done that for the past couple of months, both April and May. I did the same thing, so I completely understand, but I figured, you know, if it's gonna save me some money in the long run if it works out, and if it doesn't, there's no harm or foul, I don't really see the issue. So yeah, we're just gonna wait and see on that one. I just realized that I might have the luck of paying off all of my student loans, and then some sort of loan abatement program goes through, and then <laughs> I just spent all that money, and you know, anyway. So we'll wait and see. The last thing here is my internet provider, $79.95 for that, it's through CenturyLink. I will just tell you I'm not a fan of them, um, but that's a whole other conversation. Moving on to variable expenses. Now these are the things where I really like to track the actuals on these because this is solely based on your behavior. So for me, personally, I always love to check these and see kind of where things are at and what's happening. So for gas, I'm going to estimate $35. Um, I am considering for part of July, since I can work from home, going to visit my family, that would involve a road trip from Minnesota back to Long Island. I anticipate there'll be more gas there, but since I haven't really been using much gas at all, you know, I, that's totally within my span of savings. The next thing is groceries, and because I'm staying at home all the time, I feel like I am spending way more on groceries, and I also tend to draw out my grocery shopping, because it's basically the only outside of the house activity I have left. So I'm like, oh, let's go to Costco. I don't think a household of one really needs to go to Costco, but I will say I've gotten some great varieties of LaCroix. Um, the next thing is restaurant. With restaurants starting to open back up here for outdoor dining, um, I'm putting $100 there. I'd like to be able to meet up with some friends now and then in a socially distanced environment. Go ahead and do that. I'm looking forward to it. I understand, you know, we're not going to be returning back to normal, but hey, at least I'm able to sort of be able to have this ready in case something does, does happen where I'm able to do that. The next thing on here is personal. So this is all sorts of things like my Netflix subscription and all those good things, but also it's stuff like shampoo and cleaner for the house. So if I need more Windex or something like that, that comes from personal and that's $150. Uh, I'm hoping that in the month of June, I can get myself a haircut because this mop on top of my head is getting a little bit shabby. So fingers crossed that that happens. The next thing is YouTube. I'm estimating $75, and I will just say that I bought the Chris Ann Designs 10th Anniversary Bundle, which is $10 over my normal $75, so really it's gonna be $65, because one of my first expenses in June is gonna be this. And then the next thing I have on here, I'm gonna combine them because it doesn't make sense to keep them separate anymore. Um, XL Energy, so my utilities, uh, as well as my water and sewer, I'm just gonna combine them to an even $100. With summer beginning in the month of June, it's gonna be getting a little bit warmer, so it just makes more sense for us to start uh, affording that extra cash. And then the last thing is Shakeology. It's something that I was into a couple of years ago, and I just really enjoy having it as a meal every day. I feel like I'm making at least one good um, life choice on my diet, and so I'm gonna go ahead and continue to budget this at $130. So that's gonna wrap up all of the expenses. If you add this up, here, I'll add the total down here too. I knew I left these lines in here for a reason. So the total for my fixed expenses is $2,831.30. And then my total for my variable expenses is $940. So when you combine these two numbers together, you're left with $3,771.30, which means that if I stick to this budget completely, I will have $1,238.70 left from my budget that I can be able to put away so that I can make a giant payment towards my student loan. So I feel like I'm in a pretty good financial situation based on this budget. Obviously things are gonna change, but let's go ahead and flip over here and see where we're at. So we are down to one debt, snow, debt left in our snowball, and I really feel like I've realized the power of this. The $808.35 that you all saw 
It's just a normal thing that I've been used to seeing my budget once it was for several different minimum payments, but now it's all going to one, and it really is kind of crazy to see uh, the level of power that you have just from that, and it doesn't feel any different than it normally did, right? Um, I'm so used to this this movement, and so it's kind of kind of crazy that we're at this point. My current balance as of the filming of this video is $10,000. $609.53. And so if we make the minimum payment of $808.35, I love how I set it up like I'm doing an old school addition and subtraction problem. And then if there's room for any extra payments, which again, I'm not sure I will put it towards that, but then we'll be able to have a new balance down here. I think the one thing for me that I've realized through all of this is that you really don't need a lot. You can live with so much less than you really have. I haven't touched any of my clothes, my professional wear in forever, and I feel like I'm wearing the same four pairs of sweatpants throughout most of the week. So I'm learning a lot about what I need and what I want and what's important with all of this, and so I feel really comfortable being able to live with less moving forward, which I think will ultimately make life simpler and make me happier, so that's been my one major takeaway from all of this. All right, last but not least, we are at my sinking fund. Funny story, last month my sinking fund total was $2,721.88 in my Capital One 360. And then obviously I added $200, but then I had to use money from my sinking fund, so really, I only ended up putting in, my current total here is $2,000. $738.81. So what ended up happening is I had, my battery has been the same one I've had in my car since I bought it. So it's five years old, and the fact that I wasn't driving as much, and the fact that I had, had been jumped a couple of times because of my own forgetfulness, meant that my battery wasn't in the greatest of shape. So paired that with not driving at all, I went to meet up with a friend of mine, she had to jump my car, and then I went down every couple of days and turned it on, or went grocery shopping, and then the following Saturday, the same thing happened. A different friend, God love her, jumped my car. And so I literally just decided at that moment, you know what, you have a sinking fund for this exact reason. So I drove myself to a Firestone, they were open, they took care of it, and it just made my life so much easier. What ended up happening is I used money from my car maintenance sinking fund, which is exactly what it's meant for, and I just sort of took it out from there which feels so great. You have the app on your phone, it's super easy. I have a link to Capital One 360 down below as well. So in terms of my medical, still at $300. Luckily, haven't had to use that. Uh, the other thing is I do have an FSA that I haven't used. Um, so that, that'll be handy for any medical expenses as well. Uh, car maintenance, we will just do some quick math here. It was at 500, and now we're taking off $183. So my current, sinking fund here for my car maintenance is three sixteen ninety three. And interesting enough, they ran a diagnostic on my tires because I said in my last video that I was thinking of getting new tires and I don't need to for at least a while. So they rotated them, which was cool. So I just think an oil change is gonna be the big ticket item for me. Uh, the next thing is my car tabs, which is still 250. We are just waiting for that expense to be made. The next thing here is my travel. And this is not like, I'm going to Hong Kong for an adventure. This is like I'm flying home for a wedding or another family event. So nothing super exciting, although all those things are wonderful. The next thing here is Go Wild, which is still at $750. That's been postponed to June of next year and I'll be doing a Go Wild budget video, so look out for that, that'll be super fun. So with a little bit of math here, my sinking fund for Christmas is now at $721.88. So when you add all of these things up, you should be able to get to, yep, so currently, all of our totals here add up to $2,738.81. So anytime I need anything in between now and then, I am able to go ahead and tap into this right away, and it's no harm, no foul, not a problem. So that's gonna about wrap up this week's budget. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out a little bit so you can see the entire thing all filled in. Here we go, how cute! Um, I really love the way this came out. I feel like these washi give me a very like seersucker vibe, which is I think a type of like fabric suit combo that's not very big in the northern part of the United States, but I know down south people live for that. So it's very summery, very June. I kind of love that. Um, I think it's nice and bright and cheerful, and the fact that once I've filled it all out that the financial outlook is equally as bright and cheery, makes me happy. 
So that's gonna about wrap this video up. If you liked it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. I greatly appreciate it and it does help my channel out. If you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and click that red subscribe button so you can see all of my budget content and planner content in your feed as soon as it's published. I'm going to try, I say this in every video I feel like, um, I'm going to try to be more consistent moving forward. I have missed being able to do this. Um, I've been working on the response for our county and it's taken away a lot of my time. So I'm trying to be able to commit more to that moving forward. Follow me over on Instagram. I'm having such a good time making stories there. And I post content pretty much all the time. Um, it's at a man with the plans. It's at the it's on the ends late if you're curious. I'm also on Facebook at a man with the plans. I hope you guys have a great month of June from a fiscal perspective. I hope that you were able to meet all of your financial goals and you're feeling safe and secure. And as things return back to our new normal, as they're calling it, you know, you're still making those financially smart decisions. I think part of having a budget for me has been so calming and securing in this time is that. I'm able to live off this and I'm planning ahead and I'm being intentional and that is probably the thing that I'm most grateful for in all of this is being able to have a plan, stick to it, and be able to sleep pretty soundly at night. I hope this video was helpful. Let me know what your big things are for the month of June on your horizon. Leave a comment down below. I try to respond to all of them. I hope you have a great month and I will talk to you later. Bye planner friends. <laughs>